So you finished your entire mix in GarageBand and you're feeling good. It's sounding pretty good in GarageBand, but you want to take it out to listen to it in your car or from your phone or on a stereo, but it's too quiet. Why is that? And when you go to export it out, should you select WAVE? Should you select MP3? Should you select 24-bit uncompressed or 16-bit or cycle region? There's so many options. What are the best options? We're gonna cover all of that in today's video. Welcome back to The Band Guide, where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin. And before we get into today's video, this is gonna be about exporting out your song at the end. But if you haven't finished mixing your song or you're still confused by the mixing process, I wanna give you something to help with that. I've put together a completely free six step checklist that walks through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how to do them inside GarageBand. There's a link in the description below where you can pick it up for free, so be sure to grab it. But let's go and start talking about export settings in GarageBand. So when it's time to export your song out of GarageBand, there's really gonna be two reasons that you wanna be doing this. The first reason is if you're going through the mixing process and you feel like it's pretty good, but you wanna check it on another system to just see how it sounds not in GarageBand, and listening in your car or listening on your AirPods from your phone or wherever you like to listen to music. That's gonna be the first time and way that you wanna export your song out of GarageBand. The second time and way that you wanna do it is slightly different, and that's when it you know your mix is finished and it's time to master it. Now, people get confused about the mixing and the mastering process, but in short, the mixing process is about mixing all of these tracks together into one stereo file, so just one audio file that you have, and the mastering process is about taking that audio file and bringing up the total volume so that it's as loud as commercial releases, and to make sure that the tone is balanced between other songs on the same project, so if you're working on an EP or an album, and against those professional masters. So those are the two times that you're gonna to wanna to export your song out of GarageBand, and there's one setting that's gonna be identical for both of them. If you go up to GarageBand here under your preferences, under advanced over here, you wanna make sure that export projects at full volume is turned off. What this setting does, it says is when you export a project, auto normalize increases the volume if needed so the project is not too quiet. But normalizing is not the best way to add volume to a project. What auto normalize does is it has a line here that's the top volume of your mix. So let's just pretend like this line is the top volume of our mix. Well, let's say our mix is all the way down here but we have one big snare hit or something that peaks way up that reaches all the way up to that top line. Well, auto normalize is not gonna turn your mix up at all if you have one hit that at one point in the song hits way up here. The better thing to do is set a limiter. So a limiter is a big part of the mastering process, but if you're gonna take your song out of GarageBand to listen to it on other systems, you also wanna go ahead and put a limiter on it before you export it out at that stage so that it's not super, super quiet. So if our song is, let's just say, all the way down here in volume, and we have one big hit that peaks all the way up here, Normalize is just gonna keep our song all the way down here. So our song generally will sound this quiet. What a limiter is gonna do is it's gonna set what's called a brick wall, a brick wall limiter, that's just right below that same point that auto normalize would push up to. But when you drive your song up into a limiter, it's going to carefully dynamically shave off the top of that snare hit. So you can actually turn up the volume of your song to bring it closer, to make it louder, and that one hit or two hits or whatever you have across your mix will kind of just be gently shaved off. You likely won't even notice it because that hit is really just too dynamic and probably too quick for our ears to even perceive. But the overall mix is now gonna feel louder. It's gonna sit all the way up here as opposed to all the way down here with one big spike in it. So you wanna use a limiter before you take your song out of your session. Especially when you're just taking your song out to listen to it on other systems, in your car, on your AirPods. You don't wanna put a limiter on before you go into the mastering process. You'll do that step in the mastering process. But let's look at how to set a limiter really, really quickly. So if you hit B on any track, it will bring up your smart control window. And what we can do here, it will default typically to be on your individual track. So in this case, the snare reverb track. But if I click over to master, now I'm seeing the master output here. This is one place where all of your tracks run through all of these plugins at the same time. So all of these tracks run down through all these plugins. You can do a little bit of processing here and it's gonna impact the entire mix in one place. 
This is called a master track. It's not for mastering, but it is where all of your tracks run together. So what you should do is place a limiter at the end here, and then you can add volume on this individual limiter. This is I've done an entire video on this, so I won't explain this process here, but you can check that out above. It's called How to Make a Mix Loud in Second, or Make Your Song Loud in Second, something of that nature. Uh, but listen to how much louder this limiter is making our mix. Right. So this is really important. It's going to make it easier and translate better on other systems. So yeah, just do this. <laughs> Set a limiter before you take it out to reference it on other systems. So we have the limiter on. What should our export settings be under this menu here? So we go to share, export song to disk. What should we set our settings to be here when we're just trying to check our mix on other systems? Well, Wave is our highest quality option, but if you're just going to be checking quickly on another system, you can likely get all you need. It will be totally sufficient to do it with an MP3 file, and that is so much smaller. It's easier to share, it's easier to pull up on your phone. However you share it, MP3 is easy. You can throw it in an email. So if I'm just checking my mix somewhere else, I'll select MP3, high quality, and then I'll also select export cycle area. What the export cycle area is, is this yellow area. And this allows us to make sure that our song doesn't have extra just blank space at the beginning or at the end of the song. So if we go to the end of our song here, what I like to look for is just when does my song actually end? When are the last hits? And like when do the trails finally fall off at the end of my song? And so I'll just let it play here and I'll watch this and make sure I'm seeing the volume come all the way down on our master volume up there. And then once I see it's all the way out, I'll go to the cycle region at the top here. I'll just select and I'll make sure I'm right where my point is. And then I will just drag this to the very beginning. And then I'll also check at the beginning. You know, in a lot of cases, I actually leave one or two measures at the beginning of the song. So I have a metronome counting me in before I start playing. So in this case, it looks like I left one measure before the song actually starts. So let's go and just drag this up to right before measure two. And now we don't have silence at the start of this. So now we can go export song to disc, make sure the export cycle area is selected. And now we have a great file that we can go reference on other systems. But when you're completely done with your mix and it's time to go into the mastering process, I've done a whole video on the mastering process. I'll link to it above. And you want to take your song out of your session to master for a couple reasons. One, because you need to get out of the mindset of mixing. If you try to master here, you're going to keep tweaking little things on individual tracks and you might end up making your mix sound worse than it did before. If you know that you feel good about your mix, get it out of here so you can't keep tweaking it because you might make it sound different, but not necessarily better. So that's the first reason. The second reason is that it allows you, if you're working on multiple songs for an EP or an album, you can put them next to each other in the mastering session. So it's just gonna be like a garage band session, but instead of all these individual tracks, we'll just have an entire song on one track and then an entire next song on the next track and you can apply appropriate processing to each individual song and make sure right next to each other that this song is about the same volume as this next song, and then the next song after that, and that their tone is similar, the bass isn't way higher on this song or on this next song, you can do some final tone adjustments. And then you can also quickly reference those songs all together next to professional masters as well. So when it's time to do that, we've finished our mix, we know it's the mix we want, we should shut off our limiter and then go back up to share, export song to disc, make sure your cycle region is set appropriately. And the only thing we're gonna change here is we're gonna finally select wave. And I'll do uncompressed 24 bit. This is gonna be super high quality. And then you're not losing any fidelity when you put it into the next GarageBand session to do your mastering. So pretty simple, right? If you're taking it to listen to it on your car, you wanna throw on a limiter and then likely just do MP3 and set your cycle region so you don't have any extra blank space at the beginning or end of your mix. And if it's time to finally master it, then you wanna export it out as a wave, uncompressed 24 bit, and don't have that limiter on, but do have the cycle region on so you don't have any extra noise. And that's it. Now it's time to master it if you're all the way done with it. And I have that video that you can check out for that. And if you're still feeling like your mix could be better, 
be sure to grab my six step checklist to a pro mix if you don't already have it. There's a link in the description below where you can download it completely free. Before we go, I wanna hear from you. Was this helpful? Were you confused about the export settings or did you feel pretty confident? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time, I can only